Tonight we have a story about the students who wouldn't take no for an answer. Or in this particular case, we can't afford it, so sorry. The members of the Providence Student Union are our guests. We've had members of the union before uh, on the issue of how far they have to walk to school. Well, there was some limbo continuance of the controversy, but it has now since been resolved because the students stepped up and put a plan together and fought for themselves. It's a nice development, and we'll talk to them about what they were trying to accomplish and how they did it tonight on My State of Mind. Dan York, welcome in. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Let's jump to the rundown and get down, get down to business. Get down to business here. Yeah, you know what? There's a checkmate. There's a checkmate going on here in this ongoing battle between the Providence Firefighter Union and the Providence Mayor, Jorge Alorza. It's like one of these things where you know, your kid doesn't like what one parent has to say, so they go running to the other parent. In this particular case, one parent is the mayor of Providence, the other parent is the General Assembly. Uh, yesterday there was a Senate hearing, and we've got General Assembly Senate members who are advocating hard for the labor position that there ought to be overtime pay now for firefighters who work more than an average 42 hours a week. Police officers, too, at 40 hours a week. Here's an account from Eyewitness News. In the Senate lounge at the State House Tuesday, mayors and town managers representing 70% of the state unite to call on lawmakers at the Labor Committee to oppose legislation called the Overtime Bill that they say would make it difficult for them to restructure their own fire departments. This is a very, very big and important bill. But fire union reps want to compromise. This bill addresses, it certainly addresses, that we should be paid like everybody else in this state. Valletta backs the bill that he says would entitle firefighters to receive overtime pay for working more than 42 hours in a week. Fighting this overtime bill, as we stood today together as mayors and town administrators, offers an opportunity for us to begin to turn the state around and turn our cities and towns around. He's, he's in a little bit of a jam, as the headline kind of reads here. Uh, there's a clash, and it's big. And uh, the mayor is starting to panic a little bit. He has not participated, um, I understand, in any uh, negotiations with the firefighter union sending his minions in. But he better get down to business. Reportedly, they've got a negotiation tomorrow. Look, there's, there's a couple things going on here. Number one, we've got a mayor who's over his skis who announced, I got a 30-day plan to go from four platoons to three platoons. And I'm not going to pay you much, if at all. Now he's saying, oh, I'll pay him plenty uh, in regular time. But the firefighter union didn't buy into that, and so far there's no formal offer for anything more than I'm told, something like $50 a week for a 33% increase in their work week. So that's problematic. And the second issue here is that the General Assembly, being the other parent, jumps in here and decides that now they're going to run a piece of legislation targeted for the city of Providence, but impacting the entire state of Rhode Island. This is a big problem. It's going to come if it passes, and Dan McGowan thinks it will. Check out this tweet. Dan McGowan, of course, you have to follow him on WDPRI.com. He tells me and you through this tweet and on the radio today, he explained that the Senate president is with this legislation, supports it. That's problematic. If this thing passes to the General Assembly, it'll end up on the governor's desk. She's been very tepid with her language about it. She better get tough and start talking about a veto. Whether that holds up is anybody's guess. All right, other things happening at the General Assembly. The budget's done for prep. It's not completed. It's not passed. It came out of the House Finance Committee yesterday, but it is uh, more or less a prepared document. Here's the latest. It's a budget that's said to okay, make Rhode I've... Island competitive with surrounding states like Massachusetts and Connecticut by supporting the businesses that are already here and attracting new ones. It's a well-balanced budget. It's very pro economy, pro-business, pro-jobs. While other states around us are increasing taxes and fees, Rhode Island has been becoming more competitive. We're reducing taxes. There will be no changes to the sales and income taxes. The corporate tax will be reduced by $50. State subsidies will also be available to help lower the cost to develop real estate. We'll continue on the themes of making sure that jobs and the economy are the number one priority moving the state forward. This budget serves the needs, one way or another, of each and every Rhode Islander. The entire budget is a little more than $8.5 billion, an increase of about $38 million of what the governor proposed. The Finance Committee says they agreed with the majority of the governor's ideas. 
Once it passes through the House Finance Committee, it heads to the House and Senate for a vote before the governor signs off. I'm optimistic that I will get a budget that I will be able to sign and will be enthusiastic to sign. Of course, here was your headline on the whole situation. Uh, new breaks for business. Yeah, there's some targets for business. And, you know, I, I don't be fooled, though, that this is, this is some big theme to turn Rhode Island around. The governor wants to target some incentives for business. She's got some of it. She wants to cut Medicaid. She's getting some of that. The speaker wanted a big tax cut that was more symbolic than real. And so the Social Security tax cut, which is about worth, you know, eight, nine, ten million dollars, something in that neighborhood, is really window dressing. Uh, whatever. Did it raise a lot of taxes? No, there's little taxes, like not so little for vacation renters uh, and the people who organize for that kind of economy in South County. The idea, though, that the minimum corporate tax, not the corporate tax, but the minimum corporate tax has been cut from $500 to $450 is a joke. I guess I won't spend it all in one place. I have a company, many of you have a company, and it's the worst check I write all year. And it's definitely anti-business. Well, speaking of the budget, inside it is the pension deal, which is a real mistake. The headline on WPRI.com, yep, so the district court judge, Sarah Taft Carter, has approved the pension settlement, and without getting into the governmental weeds, it goes now to the General Assembly for its execution. The problem is, is that it's been inserted in the budget, and that's not good. The General Assembly leaders think it's great. The settlement by its very nature is imperfect and does not address all of the concerns that many of the employees had raised. But what it does offer is closure. I appreciate the sacrifices of our hardworking employees and our retirees, um, and uh, we're going to move forward as the state. <laughs> We're just moving forward. If anybody could define for me what this move forward thing is, I would. Can you do that on your state of mind? Can you explain to me what moving forward means? I'd, I'd like a definition. But the problem with the pension settlement being in the budget is well explained by John Marion from Common Cause, who was here last night. As part of the settlement, uh, the the plaintiffs uh, and the defendants to the lawsuit agreed to a a settlement agreement, which is a legal document. And on the uh, fourth page of that settlement agreement, it talks about how the parties to the agreement will not say anything bad uh, about the agreement. Well, that agreement is now a piece of legislation. So it means that the governor and the general treasurer and who are the, defendants, the, who are defendants and the unions who are the plaintiffs can't say anything bad about that. So we're afraid that if you roll this into the budget, the General Assembly is going to throw other things into the budget that she might want to veto, but she can't because of the settlement. Perfectly explained by John Marion. Big abdication of executive branch authority by Governor Raimondo. Here's hoping no last minute shenanigans happen that impact the budget with her hands tied behind her back. Alrighty, moving to the national political scene, coming here to Rhode Island, you got $1,000 or more and you like Hillary, get to Paolino's house. It's going on as we speak if you're watching the show early. Hillary Clinton in Rhode Island, the headline is all about her attending the fundraiser tonight. Joe Paolino puts this together. He and Clinton are really close. It's interesting because uh, uh, Hillary seems to be able to skate in here and make herself a lot of dough. I wonder if Link Chafee, the Democratic candidate for president as well, will show up and pull some kind of stunt. Wouldn't that be great theater? In the meantime, Michelle Kwan has joined the campaign. Very interesting. I wonder if Hillary checked out how well her husband Clay did with Michelle as active <laughs> as she was. Anyway, and on an international note, yes, this is going on. A meeting. Headline. Hmm. CBS has a report. Pope Francis welcomes everyone to the Vatican. That includes Russia's President Putin at a time when much of the world has slammed the door. Putin has come under fire for Russia's role in the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Many hope Pope Francis can build diplomacy through religion. Now the Ukrainian Catholic Church is asking the Pope to protect its followers from Russia. 
The U.S. is urging Pope Francis to join the West in condemning Russia's actions in Ukraine. The Pope has not publicly taken sides. Ukraine uh, folks are not happy with the Pope. You've got to be somewhat careful about expressing that. Uh, but the Pope gets into these muddy waters. I appreciate that he does. Hopefully prayers and a little bit of uh, firm Vatican TLC will have an impact on Mr. Putin. I have a funny feeling Mr. Putin will say one thing to the Pope and still do another. Your state of mind is important to us. 228-1886 is the line to leave us a voicemail, email, or Facebook post, or tweet at us. How about this one? Uh, I say privatize the industry. Competition's what we need, not a monopoly. Until we demand this, nothing will change, says Robert. And this is about the uh, firefighter situation. Let me tell you something. That might sound far-fetched to, to a bunch of you, but if you think about it, with all the discussions we've had here on the show with the lieutenant governor, the firefighter union president, the mayor of North Providence, following Mayor uh, Lorza's issues here, if this legislation for mandatory overtime over 42 hours passes and creates a kind of financial log jam and crunch that it predictably will, you never know. Maybe not in Providence, but somewhere somebody's going to say, that's it, I'm throwing them all out, and I'm going to do it privately. You know, be careful what you ask for from all sides of that controversy. All righty, when we come back, the controversy resolved because the students stepped up and fought for themselves. They were Welcome back in. You know, when this first came up uh, a while back, when the kids were walking to school, you know the old adage, you walk to school uphill, you know, both ways, you know, four feet of snow, da 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 Well, in Providence, they've been doing that. Uh, climbing over potholes and snow banks uh, three miles without a bus pass. Well, they got it down to two and a half miles, and then, that was last year, uh, all by the efforts of the Providence Student Union, literally walking city officials all over the city, explaining to them what the problem was. Uh, and then this, uh, how a group of students took on the city in Providence and won. So they won and got down to a reasonable solution, it seems. I don't think it's fully approved, but the city council has actually made some concessions and uh, put into the budget that, uh, you know, after two miles, you get a bus pass, for crying out loud. Uh, and that's an important thing. A pop, a kid is... Uh, one of the delegates for the student union and a junior uh, at E-Cubed Academy, and Marcel Mensa is a junior at Classical High School. Welcome to the broadcast. Nice to have you. Thanks for coming. Appreciate Thank it. You. Congratulations on your student advocacy. Thank you. You're very soft-spoken. <laughs> you got to get after it, man. We got 12 minutes of television. Yes, you should be like, a, yes, <laughs> yeah. we won. Hey, um, it's a big deal. The Providence Student Union is a nonprofit that developed first after the whole high school reorganization issues that went on there. When did you first join the, the student union? Probably January, like the beginning of this year. On this issue? Was it what, was that what drove you? Yeah, mostly. Well, there was a lot of issues, but then this is like one of the issues that concerned me a lot. Did you have to walk to school a, a long way or not take yeah, the bus lived, or what was going on there? I live 2.4 miles away. 2.4? Mm -hmm. mm. Under the 2.5, not getting helped, correct? Mm -hmm. so, and I had to walk a lot of the times. Like when my parents are working, I would have to walk to school mm. even if it was snowing. What was your walk? Um, I'm 1.9 to school. Okay. So I'd still have to walk. But. Yeah, so you didn't help yourself. Oh. Helped over a thousand students, so good. That's yeah. what we really work for. Bigger picture, bigger yeah. issue. So tell me, uh, without me telling the story, you tell the story. You guys had made an incremental gain, mm -hmm. and then it felt like it stalled, right? Yeah. Talk about it. So what happened is, as many people might know, is it was reduced from three miles to 2.5 miles. Right. And since last year, we've been working on this, and beginning of this year, we came back to the issue because a promise was made by the mayor to bring the bus pass radius down from 2.5 to 2 miles. And students really needed this, and it wasn't something that students could wait on anymore because we had to get to school. So there was just a lot of organizing, a lot of work, and then now we're here at 2 miles. He was hesitating, right? He was, he was saying, oh, oh. He, he promised in the campaign that he was going to bring it down, but then when the budget realities, they say, kind of, well, at the end, it was one of his priorities. He was really successful, and he showed us that he really cared for us. And that's why he reduced it to two miles. Well, that's very diplomatic. But you guys had to kind of be after him, and you had like a hashtag, keep your promise, a lot of social media, a lot of pressure. Did you talk with him individually? 
Um, yeah, we had uh, a meeting or two with him, and we just discussed things, how things would work, and how we thought we should move forward with things. Yeah, the city council finally succumbed, right, and decided that they were going to put yeah. some near $700,000 in the budget. So how does it work? You guys, over two miles now, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have a bus, you get a bus pass. So you're still going to be hoofing it from 1.9 miles. Yeah. But you now will do what? What will you do well, next year? I have, I will have a bus pass now, so I will just start taking like the city bus to school. And the bus pass costs what? Well, it costs around like sixty dollars each month. Is that the discounted rate? Uh, no, it's sixty-four without the discount. Sixty-four without the discount. What's the discounted rate to you? Well, what, I don't. What really was in the deal? I I don't know. I just I used to walk to school, so I don't really buy bus passes. But, so what was the savings though for the people over two, over two and a half miles? Well, um, either paying the five dollars a day for transportation or the bus passes, families would have to pay between seven hundred and seventy to a thousand dollars a year just to get their children to school. So I think that was like a big thing. Like, so do you remember, do you know what the net savings is uh, with this new decision with the subsidy on on the bus pass? How much, you, how much are your kids saving now that they would have had to pay for yeah. top dollar? Between 772 That amount of money. Yep. Okay, I get it. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about what was learned by this exercise and what else could be up for the Providence Student Union because, you know, a couple of wins, you start to get, you know, really active. They would. So my Providence Student Union folks are here. We had a little clip that we wanted to play uh, from the uh, uh, the Providence City Council scene, the City Hall Chambers. We want to run that, Steve. The first time that they gave us the bus passes, I was really extremely happy. Now that he did not include it in the budget, I was thinking like, well, what do we do now? And this is what we're going to do now. You can see the protest uh, in its all its uh, glory. That's Rosalind Trinidad, who we had on the broadcast, I believe, last time around when this thing was up around three miles that the kids had to walk. By the way, uh, just during the break, we were able to clarify the bus passes now are free to the kids. Mm -hmm. So what was a cost of, of hundreds and hundreds of dollars are now free, which is, a, I think, a tremendous accomplishment for you. What did you learn through this whole process of well, advocating? I learned that... We can be successful if we like do stuff together, and it doesn't matter who you are. We can just win. Was this your first time actually stepping out of your comfort zone and saying, "Hey, you know, I'm involved in something it was political"? It was the first time I would actually do something, and it would be like this big, and we would actually be successful and win it. Yeah, to give you a little adrenaline. That does it to make you feel like, "Hey, this is kind of a, this is kind of a neat thing." Stepping up, saying something, yeah. accomplishing a goal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was your experience with the whole thing? Um, it was great, just seeing how well, like the things that can happen when students come together, um, especially seeing that students aren't usually thought of to have much power or much of a say in things. It was just really great to see that students can come together and do something big like this. Hmm. Uh, I was was really happy to see it. So, what's it done in terms of your view? Oh, it showed me that you know there's a lot that we can accomplish and that we shouldn't let things like hold us back from things like that. What's next? Is there something else that's bugging you guys that you may start working on? Well, till now, we don't have anything else. This is the one like main issue. Everybody in Providence, like students, really had like an issue facing it, so. So you're gonna sit on this victory for a while? But you never know what's gonna pop up, right? Well, we have other campaigns working on other schools, so there are a bunch of different things going on in our different segments, but uh, what you said was about, right? Well, this Providence Student Union has grown, right? So this yes. has been a nonprofit that began back in 2010 when Hope High School was kind of in, in uh, kind of an organizational disarray. It gives you a chance to meet kids from outside your yeah. own comfort zone, classical and, mm -hmm. and the like, right? So you're interacting with kids all throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Yes? Does it offer you perspectives on, on different challenges depending on where students are in the city? Well it's different from school to school. Some schools have like more challenges than we do. Some schools are new, some schools are old, so it's kind of different hmm. on how it is. There's, not, there's some inequities in the public school system, don't you think? Yeah. Do you recognize them? 
Yeah, especially in coming together with our peers, we do see a lot of different things in different schools. And like, not every school has the same problems, and not everyone will want to stand up for the same Classical things. Classical is a pretty well reputed uh, high school. What's your plan after high school? Um, as in college? Right? Yeah, all that stuff, like the rest of your life type of thing. Like the um, big picture, like what do I want to be when I grow up type of thing? Um, something in engineering, something where I can build and hopefully help people, or something like this, where I can continue to empower other people and help other oh, There's people. a big difference between being an engineer and a politician or, or, or a, uh, a community organizer. Yeah. You're going to keep your options open yep. at this point. What are your plans? Well, I'm going to go to college and then maybe be like a pharmaceutical or like a doctor. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. What's life like right now for the average high school student? Is that a proper term, average high school student in the city of Providence? What are the challenges? Well, as was said before, there are a lot of different things that a lot of different people at different schools encounter. But I think a big thing was with this bus pass campaign because we've pretty much knocked off something that afflicted a lot of high school students. And it was, it was really good. What do people not get about kids today? Well, what's the biggest thing challenge that you think you're, you're battling? with perceptions about young people and all the like? Well, they feel like we're not really important and like whatever we say since like we're like under 18 and we're just like students. So that was like the biggest challenge. But we were like able to overcome it and then prove that we were able to do something and accomplish. Does it feel, when you're going through something like this, do you feel a, a kind of a maturing process, you know, happening within when as a group you galvanize you accomplish your goal. Um, does it change the way you kind of just exist every day moving forward? Definitely. Like, I feel a lot more mature having been in this organization and just my public speaking, my interaction has improved overall and it's really good to see that change in myself. Yeah, public speaking is very important. Uh, it, it, it's an mm -hmm. important asset. And it's one thing, like you look directly at me. You look me right in the eye. That is a skill. In Indeed. fact, that puts you ahead of most of your peers who will look everywhere other than at the person that they are dealing with or talking with. And, and so do you. I mean, these kinds of basic things, don't, don't overlook what you've probably learned in this whole process. Because kids today, I'm old enough now to say, hey, kids today, kids today don't have that in general. You know that, don't you? Yeah. You're acting like leaders, which is a good thing. All right, so what's the moral of the story? What did you learn? Well, as, as I said before, like us students, we can really accomplish stuff if we come together and like what we did in the bus passes. All right. All right, doctor. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see you down the line. And I don't know, Mr. Engineer, <laughs> politician combo, congratulations on your good work. Thank you. And keep it up. All right. We'll have a final thought when we come back. Please stay with us. You know, it's funny, whenever you have students on the program, you, you, sometimes the, the lights, cameras, and the action kind of, you know, mm, tighten them up a little bit. But you know what? They weren't tight when they were battling for what was rightly theirs, and that is a chance to walk to school, you know, in a reasonable amount of distance, and if not, be able to grab the bus. Uh, the mayor of Providence made the promise, and then he made good on the promise, so good for him and good for them. It's a great learning lesson. Uh, tomorrow night, speaking of the city of Providence, we will have Councillor David Salvatore on. He will be talking about uh, things like what kind of tax breaks ought we be giving to the folks who want to develop in the city, like in the 195 district. So be around for that. We'll see you on the radio at noon until 3 tomorrow on WPRO. Thanks so much for watching. Good night.